This video is a collaboration with Henry the Paleo Guy, a paleontologist, paleo artist, and fellow science YouTuber. Check out his socials in the description and comment section below. Land slugs tend to be pretty boring on the outside. They're just slug-shaped slugs, slugging it out in the detritus of the world's forests and jungles, right? Well, despite what the pedestrian banana slug or common garden slug may have you believe, there are hundreds of species of the little boogers that put a wacky spin on what it means to be a tube animal that glides around on slime. Let's take a look at one of the more intriguing land mollusks, the pickle slugs. Hey, while I have your attention, I have two other channels you should check out when you get a chance. Edge of Reality is where I talk about cryptids and the paranormal, anything that is creepy, crawly, and outside of the realm of science. Edge's World of Monsters is where I tackle basically anything fictitious, whether that be kaiju or dragons. If you are familiar with the various, sometimes niche, social media accounts of science communicators who study living critters, you may be aware of the various super bizarre and barely known creepy crawly species of the world. They tend to pop up every now and then when photos or videos go viral and range from giant spiny green hyper carnivorous crickets to teeny weeny caterpillars covered in nubby gooey armor and even to one I have picked from my cauldron of weirdos, a warty, snotty-colored slug from New Zealand. To an outsider like myself, New Zealand feels like a completely bizarre, almost terrarium-like cornucopia of diverse biomes. The Darn Island has tundra, mountain, steppe, arid, and temperate biomes, with temperate rainforests, almost deserty parts, as well as caves, volcanoes, and glaciers. It's like an alien picked its favorite biomes from across the planet and cultivated it into one large island. As such, I wouldn't immediately think about something as pedestrian as slugs, but if I were to stop and think about it for long enough, it would only make sense that the moistest rainforesty parts of the island have their own endemic groups of bizarre slugs that evolved there in complete isolation while slurping up all kinds of detritus or tiny animals. Slug, thanks to being an old ass word, is applied to groups of animals in a scientific and layman context. It's most commonly used to refer to any shellless mollusk that moves about on a muscular foot. I do hesitate to use the word slither, since that's not exactly the movement they use, but to refer to slug locomotion as slug like seems a little circular. Furthermore, thanks to the confusing natural power of convergent evolution, there have been so many lineages of mollusks that have lost their shells independently of one another, which has resulted in a bunch of families called slugs that are not actually all that related to one another, aside from all being mollusks of course. For example, there are the sea slugs, which is yet another common name used to refer to nudibranchs, sacoglossans, cephalapsidians, aplysiomorphans, thecostomarsans, gymnosomarsans, and archidodines which are ironically pretty much the only group of true snails and slugs to be sea slugs. Slugs are everywhere, pretty much, but New Zealand is unique in the world of slugs, for it has its own army of them. According to entomologist and photographer Gil Wisen, there are around 30 species of slugs native to New Zealand, and they all belong to the subfamily Athoricophorinae. The first genus of these slugs to get a name was Athoricophorus in the 1850s, hence the eponymous group names of Athoricophorinae, Athoricophoridae, and Athoricophoroidea. Now, Athoricophoroidea includes slugs found throughout the Southwest Pacific Islands, with the New Zealand endemic ones belonging only to that Athoricophorinae subfamily. All of them are called leaf-veined slugs because they have a veiny pattern in their skin that may be a type of camouflage when among leaf litter. There are two subfamilies to be familiar with, the aforementioned Athoricophorinae and Anatinae. The Anatinae are found in Australia, New Caledonia, and many of the other islands throughout those chains. However, I want to focus on the Athoricophorinae. This subfamily of slimy sentient boogers contains three genera, Athoracophorus, Paleopodex, and Pseudonychia. 
Most of these critters look like leaves, or perhaps the slightly more viral pancake or leather leaf slugs, having a large, leathery looking mantle covering over the top of their bodies. It does have that veiny patterning of course, but many also have veiny indentations that make them look even more like leaves. Unlike many European and North American slugs, these living lumps of potato skins are way more low base in shape, or tongue shapes? Whatever analogy works best for you. Exceptions have to be exceptioning of course, and since these critters have no bones, they can of course change shape. So you will probably see some species of the Athorica forest genus look longer and skinnier, like more familiar slugs. Now that you have been given a briefer on New Zealand slugs, it's high time you get to see the slug that made this video possible, the pickle slug. Wildlife photographer and filmmaker Nick Volpe has posted about the pickle slug a few times every now and then, and that is what brought it to everyone's attention. However, the literature on these things is scant and weird. Then again, extant literature is so much more in the weeds than extinct literature. From what research that has been conducted to provide you with spit facts about pickle slugs, it has been found that the name pickle slug is made up entirely by Nick Volp, but fits so well with the few species that look like pickles that it might as well be official. Also, I have found that the pickle slug that Volp posted, Athoricophorus papillatus, has had somewhat of an interesting taxonomic history. You see, from what I have gathered, it was once considered either a species of the Pseudonitia genus or a species that has a subgenus, that subgenus also being Pseudonitia. That would make the prickly pickle beast technically labeled Athoricophorus pseudonitia papillatus. However, based on the Ocean Biodiversity Information System website, it seems as though the Pseudonitia label was sunk or synonymized in some way over the last hundred plus years. So for all intents and purposes, the official pickle slug is Athoricophorus papillatus. Though, as you will see, there are other slugs within the Athoricophorinae that look pickly enough to be in the pickle club. Athoricophorus papillatus is the main pickle slug due to the nubs that cover its skin and its combination of yellowish green and darker swamp green colouring. The nubs are placed on top of the highest part of the lobes in between the etched, leaf-like vein patterns of the skin. Scientifically, these nubs are referred to as papillae. They have an indentation that goes from the head, down the centre of the back, and to the tail tip. Two tentacles at the front of the head, which can retract and go underneath the mantle for protection. They have eyes on the end of those stalks, after all. The most commonly observed species in this genus also includes Athorecophorus, Bitentaculatus, Maculosus, and Suteri. Athorecophorus, Bitentaculatus and many other species in the genus, is much more subdued than the pickle slug. They don't have the nubs or strongly etched vein pattern and is brown. That being said, their veins have a stronger contrast since they are brown in colour against a lighter brown body. Plus, they have an orange ring's breathy hole on the back and slightly to the right. The sad part about these critters is that not much is known about what kind of mischief they get up to in their day-to-day -day lives. They seem to be algae and fungi munchers observed to scrape the yummy stuff off of plants in the wettest parts of New Zealand. They don't actually eat the plants they splooge and splorge all over, making them the opposite of the usual land mollusk pest. They are also nocturnal, hence why not much is known of them. They have been observed at night mating atop the leaves they like to mimic. Oh yeah, all slugs are hermaphrodites that mate by extending their penises into one another while dangling from a ledge with their bodies and penises entwined. Once both partners are preggers, they find a secluded spot to plop out their eggs and then hunker down to look after them until they hatch. These pickles are good mother pickles. What more could you want out of a living piece of flesh? Not much I tell ya. That's been the pickle slug. What do you think? The next viral pet craze? Maybe not. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.